sweet. What's going on, guys? Welcome to another edition of the Nerd Chase channel. I'm your boy, Nerd Chase, and I am trying to commit to doing uh, a series review on the new Resident Evil television series developed by Netflix. Now, we all know how me uh, trying to stay dedicated to something very hard, if not impossible. You know what? I still ain't even done the finish the Fallout, the 30 things we want to see in Fallout 6. But I do want to eventually come back to that. Now, in this video, I'm going to tell you all about re review episode one. We're going to dig into it. It's going to be spoilers. I'll tell you what I didn't like about it. I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step of what happened and just let y'all guys know. I actually wanted to kind of do like a, a live viewing of it so you get my initial reaction when things happen. But I, didn't, I decided this was probably a better way of fleshing out my feelings towards the series. Um, the episode is, I think, about an hour long, and Resident Evil, I'm so sorry, just has not had the best track record in terms of being adapted into the media. Books, they've done great. Comics, great. Manga, great. The live action movies, terrible. I love them because they're entertaining, but they're still terrible uh, films. The animated ones are spot on they had another television series that came out i believe last year was animated could have been better but it was it was decent but it could have been better uh but now we have the live adaptation another live adaptation that i believe actually does take place at, at it within it but like an alternate timeline i'm talking about silver timeline like in halo and don't get me started on that. If y'all want to check out the reviews for that, look, I, I, I wrote it down on the website. I didn't record that one, but one day, no, in fact, I did do a video on that one. Yeah, I did do a video. That was It's on my streamline. Uh, it's on the podcast channel. For those that don't know, I'm doing my podcast on a different channel, Nerd Chase Podcast, but check them out. They're uh, entertaining, fun, and just some good uh, old-fashioned uh, thoughts being thrown out there. So if you want to uh, go ahead and just put something on the background I'll, I'll do that for you i even put you to sleep but anyways let's go ahead and just get into the initial review now before i get into this be sure to hit that like share subscribe and that notification button to get the best of what we have going on on this channel uh also It always feels good to uh, press that button and get that going. But let me go ahead and just say Resident Evil is one of my all-time favorite uh, video game franchises, horror franchises, just all-around media franchise. I've read the books, I've read the comics, the manga, played the games, watched the movies, watched the last television series, and I'm on this television series. And I believe that it has a lot of room to grow and to continue to develop. Unfortunately, sometimes what we get is trash so uh, netflix has also been somewhat on the track of doing good content and a whole lot of bad content a lot of their adaptations of certain uh, franchises actually come out and work out really good castlevania for one one of the best anime uh, adaptations uh the witcher still is just fucking awesome like they do pretty good with a lot of the adaptations that they do have going on for them if you hadn't known kingdom the uh, zombie apocalypse show that's set back in the field of japan or china that's actually based off a of web comic so and even that sh show is actually just fucking awesome look netflix does have a lot of potential when they're not led in political uh bullshit just seeping to their stuff and you can definitely see it, see there's some woke shit in this. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the review. Now, the episode starts off with the glimpse into this future where the zombie apocalypse, the T-virus had escaped, everything that went to hell. And we are following a survivor named Jade, who obviously, from what you could tell within the first like minute of it, is a strong, independent I guess black woman and I'm not holding that against the character and she's actually in the world full of zombies and there's doing the supplies and just crazy shit going on and monsters and everything so I guess you would have to be a tough cookie so I'm not really taking that away from her she's surveying zombies studying zombies trying to figure out how zombies work but it's weird because in this universe they don't call them 
we're in this series, they don't call them zombies, they call them zeros. Now, I'm not sure if that's actually for, like, legal reasons that they changed that. And I'm sorry. Look, I'm all for creativity, but I'm tired of these zombie shows. It's just every time, uh, or movies, they always trying to name zombies different things. There's fucking zombies. You got zombies, Zs, uh, Zeros, Walkers, Deadheads. Just, just look, they're zombies, they're fucking zombies. Just call them zombies. <laughs> it just feels so unnecessary, especially since zombies are the one thing that's uh, not really unique to Resident Evil, but definitely one of the highest selling points. So I think you can call them zombies. But anyway, she is surveilling zombies, and she uses these rabbits, uh, which I wanted to see. I, I wanted to see something. Uh, say something. She's staying in a tent, and I get that the tent has a defense mechanism around it. Which they didn't really specify to later on what the show it later on in the show what it does. It's kind of fucking cool actually, but she's like in a tent on the ground, and I'm like, well, zombies and monsters and shit could just easily get to you. Like I said, the defense thing is there, but still, and that's like this like interesting like this stack of metal cages or something metal this metal thing behind it and i'm thinking why not put the tent on top of that so nothing can get past even if like say the defenses go down or something nothing can slip past you can just hide in that i hide up there that's an extra defense but okay so she goes out takes these rabbits and i was wondering what they doing with these rabbits which it does somewhat becomes prominent uh it's, it's an interesting point uh, put a pin in there about the rabbits she uses the rabbit, pokes a little hole in its ear, and watches zombies just react. And the zombies go fucking crazy. And I'm like, I'm not opposed to zombies doing that, but I'm like, at this point, these zombies, the zombie apocalypse has been going on for some years now. And I'm like, these zombies act like they just turned like a like a few like a few days ago. Cause they're they're fast, they're reactive, they're they can fucking run. You would think this was 28 days later how fast these zombies can run and how active they are and just how specific their senses are. Now, later on, it is established that the zombies, they can't see. Uh, like, over time, their senses do dwindle except for their sense of smell, which is why the girl ends up pricking the rabbit in the ear. And I'm like, well, they don't feel softer than that rabbit. I'm like, sorry, bugs. You know, you serve a purpose now. Now, I ain't gonna lie, the rabbit took the fuck off. I, I was rooting for that rabbit. That rabbit just got the hell out of Dodge. But the zombies, I'm thinking to myself, y'all are, like, fucked up and stuff. So why are y'all moving this way? Y'all look, it's obvious from the makeup. Which some look cool. Some look like they could be done a bit better. But for the most part, the, the makeup and pro the prosthetics and stuff look, look decent, look decent. And I'm like, why are they moving so fast to be zombies, uh, for the, to be these types of zombies? Now, what is stated in the show is they're not dead. They're the infected kind. They're not the resurrected dead kind, which is kind of weird because I think they they can become the resurrected dead kind. And like I said, again, 28 days later. So all they want to do is eat and, and infect other people and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. But still, I'm like, these zombies run fast as hell. But she's surveilling these zombies. I tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm not lying. Literally like 10 feet away in like a in an opening. And I'm like, if these are zombies and you know they can react, because I understand she's studying them. She's used to studying them and stuff. So that's a level of comfort if you know something, how something's going to react. Um... But at the same time, I'm like, you're literally like 10, 15 feet away from them on the ground. And it's a bunch of them. It ain't like one or two. It's like fucking 30 of them. Maybe more than that. And they're all trying to get this rabbit. And for some reason, they're not studying her. I mean, I guess because they can't see her. And she ain't really made no noise. So I'd give it to her on that. But I'm like, even still, you, you, you would think she'd be in like an elevated position or something. Or behind something defensive. Or at least if she's going to be by a damn doorway, be able to, it'd be let it be a door that can close or something. But that's not the case. She's like literally just standing in this opening. And it looks like a bus with, that's missing a door or something. I don't know. Just something. I'm like, why in the fuck is she just right there? So what happens, of course, she raises her arm up, cuts her arm, little bit prick. 
you thought for the way it looked, I thought she cut deeper than that, but she didn't. Just a little prick, but it was enough for the zombies to sit there and smell the blood. So of course they charge at her, and I'm like, damn, these some fast ass zombies. How long were they infect? Were they just infected? They took the fuck off. I have no idea how in the hell. Like, uh, this is one of the times, like, you need to let me know. Is the longer their zombies, do the slower they move? Or they, do they move slower the longer they, their zombies? Or do they, if, if they feed, does they do they get sustenance or something like that? Like, y'all gotta let me know what kind of zombies these are. Because I'm used to, okay, usually if you're getting infected and stuff, you're fast at first. And then as time goes, you start slowing down because of what it does what the virus itself does to the body as well as not, not having the proper nutrients and, you know, your body's degrading and everything based on if you're wounded or something like that. Uh, but they just take the hell off. One of the, the one zombie that they kept showing actually tackles her down. And I did notice this. That one zombie jumped on her and everything. And by this time, she's made it to a trap. She just hadn't had a chance to spring it because she took the... She turned it off when she left. And I'm like, there's still like 30 zombies around her, but it's only the one attacking her. And I'm like, why aren't they all just jumping on her? Because I'm like, when they were trying to get the rabbit, they was all dogpiling and everything. And even when they were chasing her, they were like dogpiling. But then when the one catcher is like the rest of them are just chilling around. You guys see it in the camera, they're literally like just chilling around and everything. So I thought that was really weird. Oh. Uh, there was an interesting scene, uh, scene, and I like cameras. I like how see camera angles and stuff like that. There's one unique scene, not really unique, but it's, it's unique to me, where she's like listening to the ground. I think she's on the bridge. She has her ear to the ground, and it doesn't look like that at first because it kind of caught me off guard. I was like, she listened, but she got her ear to a wall. But I, but the camera was, of course, she had her ear to the ground, and then as she got up, the camera gets up with it. Like I like camera stuff like that. I thought that was pretty cool. I do want to talk about it. I did not want to uh, forget that. But again, this uh, she has been in this area surveying these zombies for six months. She's got a family at home, uh, a husband and a daughter. And we made to feel, you know, feel some type of connection with the character. Honestly, I really don't. I think she's interesting. I think she could be an interesting character. And throughout the rest of the episode, you're hoping that that... You know, she has interesting qualities, she's had interesting characteristics, interesting traits, hobbies, and stuff like that. That she doesn't. But going back to what I was uh, talking about, the zombie attacks her. She manages to kick the zombie off, activates the trap. And the trap are these, like, maybe eight or nine poles with lights on top of them. And they're, like, you know, defensive or whatever. And if something gets past it, these blow torches blow out of all of them forming this ring of fire and it's pretty intense so all the zombies that happen to be right there get burned the fuck up and then it releases this red mist and i'm not sure if the red mist is just to put out the fire after the fact so it doesn't spread or i don't know but it's, it's kind of cool i'll give them that that seems actually pretty cool seeing uh that go down uh but then something else happens episode one she ends up in good old uh resident evil fashion a monster just shows up out the fucking nowhere this giant caterpillar just comes out the damn ground and attacks her and there's some it's kind of cool but it's kind of fucking dumb because she's been sitting there i'm not sure if she's been in that exact spot camping out but she's been there for six months apparently studying these zombies trying to figure out how they work and everything and this whole time this caterpillar has been there and she's never disturbed it she's never got the inkling that it was even there and if she did uh, find out that the thing was there why would she even stay there that didn't really seem like a uh now the cgi could have been a little bit better but still, it's actually the caterpillar thing looks actually pretty cool. I give them that. It looks, it looks pretty fucking awesome, and it would look like something I would expect from Resident Evil. But now, what I didn't say that this uh, this story takes place in two time periods uh, before this outbreak when she's younger, because it does follow her in both time periods. 
when she's younger, 14 to 15 years prior, and then, of course, after the uh, apocalypse, the end of the world, whatever you want to go with, uh, the initial, uh, after the virus is out and it's doing its thing. But so it zips back into the past, just as the caterpillar thing just pops the fuck up. For some reason, I put centipede, it's actually a caterpillar. And we follow these two girls. Uh, one of them is Jade, but she's younger, and her sister Billy, and her father, Albert Wesker, uh, played by, I can't remember this fool's name, but I'm going to look it up as I speak. Um, they're moving to New Raccoon City. Yeah, you know, New Raccoon City. Uh, another adaptation of Raccoon City. Why can't Umbrella just uh, be in the city not called Raccoon City? Why does it have to be a New Raccoon City? I would think Raccoon City at this point might have a negative connotation. I probably wouldn't say Raccoon City anymore, but okay, fine. That's what they're going to go with. We'll just go with that. And they're pretty generic. Uh, Wesker is, just, you know, he's a high person up in Umbrella Corporation. Yay, but he definitely is miscast. Definitely isn't written to be Wesker. Uh, what is this guy's name? Lance Reddick. Now, I like Lance Reddick. I think he's a good actor. Fucking atrocious when it came to being cast for this role. This ain't nothing but varnish points for the woke mob. There's no reason for this guy to have been Wesker. He could have just been a new original character. And, uh, just, you, you know, I'm just not even going to get into that. Again, so Reddick is a good actor. Just He just, I can't wait to do it down. Just uh casting choice or character rank for this for this character but anyways um did not like that he's cast but hey we gotta go with what we got so he doesn't feel like rusker in the slightest he, he does not but he's there with these two kids uh two teenagers uh jade who's younger now is just a complete fucking asshole really don't like a character she's just disrespectful um so unlikable just a complete asshole don't really now the first like five minutes of being around this character i wish either a zombie just chewed her damn head off or somebody would have just shot uh, mistaken her for a zombie and pop out her did not like her character uh i don't really like billy either because billy's just a generic sister that just is meek and you know, doesn't want to get into trouble, doesn't really have a personality. And there is a story behind it. There's, you know, she hurt somebody uh, in the previous time and everybody in, the, for some reason, everybody in the fucking uh, school called her a psycho for that. And I'm like, so of all these people that get into fights in schools and stuff, she happened to be the one singled out to be a psycho after that person did something to her. Okay, that makes complete sense. So Billy and Jay just... Two generic characters. Albert Wesker, completely miscast and forgettable, but okay, fine. Um, they go to the new Raccoon City. Of course, there's a trope of these two teenagers are, you know, disgruntled because they had to move. And I hate that trope. I'm like, okay, it's, I get that you have friends and stuff, but it wasn't like they talked about they had friends and stuff, which is why they didn't want to go. Really, you don't know much about their lives before the move anyway so why should i care but it's just like a trope to me um so jay you know they in the house jay's just being so disrespectful uh jade and billy go outside have a conversation jay sees some dudes that you see there which the it looks like a really super high tech suburbia is very bland with the colors it's like white and light tan like tan like light tan and light blues or if it's like a uh it's like dull blues but it mixes with the lights it's very and anyway when you see people wearing their clothes and stuff it's like white and light tan it's very clean looking very sanitized very clean looking and that's something i can't say like okay resident evil umbrella corporation i can see like the visual aspect of it because you know that's how Umbrella is. It's very clean and stuff like that. So you even see that in the movies when they're in those facilities. It's very white and, and stuff like that. So that's that, that actually was actually pretty cool. The uh, house looked pretty cool too. It seemed very high tech. 
very rich people. Um, I don't know if that's a real word or anything, but anyways. So uh, Jay goes, you know, Jay Bill had this conversation again. I really don't too much care about the character. I like Billy a little bit more, but then as the series, as the episode going, I started liking her less and less because she was that just so pathetic. I want to say. So one's overly aggressive, one overly pathetic. No, and there's literally no black and white qualities between the two. But anyway, so Jay goes talk to these boys, and and then this this scene I'm still not understanding. Before it goes back into the future, Billy ends up finding a caterpillar, and she's looking at it, and is and then of course it goes back to the fight with the giant mutant caterpillar in the future, and I'm like, well, obviously that can't be the same fucking caterpillar because. When they moved to New Raccoon City, New Raccoon City was established to be in South Africa, Africa, uh, which they got brought up to um, South Africa. But the future story is in London, so I was like, I don't understand why there's a caterpillar there, unless it would have made more sense if that caterpillar, if that was the same location, fourteen years later or fifteen years later, that would make more a little bit more sense. Because you see that caterpillars, that's so I was in caterpillars there, there, but okay, fine. So we go back to the fight with the giant caterpillar, and I'm like, wow, this I kind of like it. It's very vicious, it's destructive, it's going after her with a purpose to just kill her, and she's running from it and everything. And I'm like, cool, 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 tension, tension. She goes to hide under something. I'm not, I thought she was going to crawl under a, uh, some rocks to get to the other side. And for some reason, she like crawls, and even though it looks like there's room for her to keep going a little bit further in, she doesn't. And she just kind of sits there, and the thing grabs her legs. So I'm like, okay, grab her legs. It's gonna bite her leg off, which I thought it did. It didn't. I'm like, I could have sworn I heard it crunch on her leg. But obviously, it didn't. So I'm like, okay, fine, okay, fine. So it's, it's tossing her around. And through the air like this, and I'm like, she's ragdolling right now. So she's prob she probably should have dislocated her shoulder, dislocated her leg, dislocated her fucking neck because of the way it's slinging her about. And I'm like, it's ragdolling her. So I'm like, no, she probably could have, she probably would have snapped her neck at some point the way it's doing that to her. You know, when you watch those uh, videos where the bull grabs a person. Uh, or gores a person and starts spinning them like this, or if a gorilla gets to a person and starts slinging them like this, and they're all fucked up. Yeah, I'm talking about that. And she doesn't die. And even when this thing slams her into a fucking car, I'm like, okay, she probably busted, you know, a couple organs from that. Maybe broke a few ribs. Maybe broke her back. I mean, I know she understand she landed in glass, but she landed with some force, and the fucking head hit it too. So I'm like, neck didn't snap, okay? Head didn't fucking bust. She probably should be fucking dead, but she's not. And then this giant caterpillar thing takes his fucking time to kill her. It's just sitting there, just snarling and slobbering on her. I'm like, if you want to kill, what was the point of you? chasing her if you weren't going to eat her because i would think even if you weren't just a mutant creature you're still an animal at the end of the day so you will fucking probably eat your prey and it doesn't it just hovers over gives her all i'm thinking she's gonna wake up she's playing dead or something it's just gonna wake up and shoot it in the face and kill it no she doesn't she's actually knocked the fuck out which that actually surprised me but okay and next thing you know for no, three dudes, random guys show up with gun, automatic rifles and shoot the creature and kill it. I, which I'm like, okay, I'm with that, but I felt like it should have been a bit more. It should have been a bigger fight. Yes, they, they got automatic weapons and they're shooting this giant armored bug. Uh, you know, it should be a bit more of the creature fighting back since it is giant and armored. And I highly doubt they would have armor-piercing rounds like that, but okay. You know, I thought that would, the creature would have put up a bit more of a fight. So, they end up saving her, and then jumps back into the past. Uh, we have a conversation between Wesker and Billy, 
which again I'm not not caring too much about. Uh, again, and they do like this this top shot of the area, the suburbia. I guess the school, the the umbrella corporation building, just one big shot. Looks pretty nice. High tech. The architecture, the design itself actually look pretty cool as well. Uh, we have a conversation between Billy and Jade. Uh, interesting conversation again is meant to show this connection between these two sisters but the problem I have with it again is one is overly pathetic one of them is overly aggressive and that's the connection and it's like the the connection between the two is one's one's going to be strong for both of them the other one's going to be weak for both of them and I'm like no that's not a good enough connection again we don't know any traits we don't know what kind of shit they like to do we don't like we don't know really nothing about these two characters so but we do learn that Wesker is drawing blood from them them and he's always drawing blood from them every two weeks you see him draw blood from Billy and you see him draw blood uh, well Jay drew her own blood but what's kind of interesting is you see him with like a bunch of syringes above their blood and stuff and um, he takes one of Jade's and injects himself. You find out that these two don't get sick and have never gotten sick. So, okay, obviously this is Wesker. So he's probably been experimenting not only on himself, but maybe on his kids as well. Uh, you find out, um, so, and, and this scene was so fucking ridiculous. And it just went, I don't know why this was even in it. It just went left. You have a scene where they go to school, which was probably the next day after they get there, and they're talking, and again, it goes back to the colors, the school, the people in the uniforms and stuff, whites, tans, uh, mellow blues, like really, really light mellow blues, if there's this really dark uh, hues, but not that dark not dark like black dark but kind of like a faded dark dark uh blues it's like interesting colors like that it's very clean looking um but and, and neutral looking somewhat it's it's, it's 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 very interesting uh how they got everything looking so i'll give them that too but they're in the lunch room of course and i would think since they were getting lunch that they would be getting lunch together and they would sit at the same at, at the table together and Jade is at the table. Billy's going to her. Two kids run over there to go talk to Jade. Lord knows what about what. Cause they don't. We don't get into the conversation. We don't know if they, if they, you know, met her uh, earlier. So we don't know what she's talking about. Billy, instead of going to sit with her sister, who she's fucking comfortable with, goes and sits to another table by herself. And then some emo chick pops up, and I'm like, okay, so. Billy's gonna make a friend. She's gonna be emo chick, weird friend, but cool. She's not. She is not. I don't know who the fuck this girl is. She had this really weird conversation with Billy. Gee, are y'all twins? Billy responds, "Hey, my mom." Dad had the two surrogates. We were born at the same time. So, yes, we're twins. What does this girl say? Oh, so you're a freak. How? Where, where do you get that out of? How, how did you get that out the fucking deal? A freak because she was a, sur a surrogate? That doesn't make you a freak. Not even, what understanding would you get out of that to make you say that? Now, if she would say, hey... They pulled you out of a cow's ass and you were born inside of a cow. I, I could probably understand that. But. Okay, fine. And then she's like, okay. So what's that in your shirt? And Billy's like, well, I'm a, a vegan. And then this girl proceeds to just. This girl's fucking psychotic. She's talking stupid shit. To, what was one of the lines she said? Oh, yeah. Me and my dad took me shooting, and I, something to the fact that she shot Bambi in the head, and I was like, why are you saying this? Who the fuck are you? 
So the girl's just overly aggressive. She's calling Billy a freak. I'm like, no, you're the freak. I'm like, this freak is sitting here being just overly aggressive to Billy. And Billy says something to Billy. I think Billy, I'm not sure who did this, but I think Billy knocked the tray out of her hands. And then the girl proceeds to beat the shit out of Billy. And I'm thinking to myself, why is Billy not fighting back? Now, earlier it was established some stupid shit happened when they were from a long ago or whatever. Apparently, this is the only issue that's ever happened. So, apparently, Billy has an attitude problem. Not an attitude problem, an anger management problem. And she get mad, she fucks shit up. So, she tries to be very passive to avoid fucking shit up, right? This probably would have been a good time to fuck some shit up. She doesn't do anything. She does not do anything. And then, of course, students rush around and they're hooting and hollering like fucking monkeys, recording her, you know, mocking Billy. They break up the fight. I still don't understand what the fuck was this girl's problem, why she went over there to talk to Billy, why she was messing with Billy, how it just escalated the way it did, what person would act like that who the fuck wrote this like the dialogue that dialogue was just terrible now i could probably understand billy standing up say the girl i said some bigoted type stuff about jade uh, about jade jade can't hear because she's over there billy the, the girl might not even know billy and jade are sisters but billy says something say well you know the girl's like hey i don't like that black girl over there or they letting black people in or not or something. Then you could say Billy tried to correct her and then it escalated. That would have made more sense. But to have this girl just up and just come over here, start talking, saying stupid shit from the jump, that was just dumb. Unnecessary. I don't understand. Who the fuck wrote this? Please tell me. But anyways, let's just continue going on. So, they make it home. The father and... And at first, I didn't understand why this part either, but Jay come, uh, Billy runs in, runs to the room like a little uh, crybaby. And Jay comes in, cussing at her dad, who was in the middle of a meeting on his computer with either his associates or boss, bosses, about something that's going on in Tijuana. Put a pin in that, too. But you can, you probably already know. They're saying something bad is going on there, so you probably already know what the, what they're talking about, which I figured it, it was, and it was. But so Jade yells at her dad, sees that her dad is talking to business associates, whoever the hell they are, knocks the computer off, and storms upstairs. Just completely, she dis is one of the most disrespectful people. And it's not like she addressed her father in a in a smart manner. Hey, Dad, this girl uh, fought Billy. You need to go to the school, handle this situation. Would have been okay if she'd done that. Even though she was a bit angered, fine. But she didn't do that. She sat there and disrespected her father, who she's been disrespecting the entire first episode. And this is like the first 25 minutes. But I was just so thoroughly... Thoroughly disappointed at just the representation of Wesker in this. Cause he's just a wuss. He doesn't uh, like. I would think that Wesker would have been like, "Look, are you gonna shut your ass up? I got a certain reputation of old. You ain't gonna sit here and talk to me like this. I'll be damned if my daughter sit here and embarrass me. I'm fucking Wesker. Let's not do that." <laughs> I'll put your ass in a box. But now nah, he just, they try to make him this dad, which I'm not buying the dad angle. I i can actually, I promise you, I can actually see him being like a, like maybe, yeah, he's caring. He cares about it like later on. Like, this is all just a big experiment. He was the one that was, that had caught the short end of the straw, the, the short end of the stick. He had to watch him and everything. But this is actually all an experiment, which, again, he draws blood from him and all that. So it wouldn't be too hard of a stretch. And he's fucking Wesker. So obviously, the whole move, him being with Umbrella, him watching them, him doing the blood blood thing, him moving to New Raccoon City, 
obviously there's a, something going on. And this is more to him than just being their father. It is. Can't tell me different. So the two um, end up call, uh, talking and everything to uh, Billy and Jade. And again, you know, Wesker, I was like, why the school didn't call him? And then she addresses it. She says, hey, I tried to call you. I tried to call you. And he's like, well, I'm on the call right now with my business associates and everything. And I would think after that he would actually call the school back. Which, if he did, it isn't clear, but I don't think he did because later on it becomes an issue again and it's never brought up that he actually contacted the school about this. So, okay. Um, but all I could get out of this, because, you know, there's a scene between Jay and Billy and they're talking and, you know, Jay is telling Billy she needs to stand up for herself and all that. And I'm like, okay, I get that. Because, I mean, I hate watching characters that... Even if you do get picked on, have some development to where you stand up for yourself in some capacity. Billy is literally written to be the most pathetic character. The, the last time I've seen a character more pathetic is this, than this was, what was the girl from that book, Fallen? Because I did not like the book because of how badly she was written. Yes, you know, you had mean people in the book, but she never stood up for herself the entire time. She was, I, and that was pissing me off. I was like, why the fuck? She don't even say nothing. I mean, I get if you say something and they cuss you out or they smack you down. But at least you tried. You said something. This girl didn't say nothing. And that's why I didn't like about the Billy character either because she was just fucking pathetic. I was hoping she got it. I, hope that, I was hoping that girl meet her later on and just beat the brakes off her again because it fucking sucks. But anyway, we skip back into the future. Now, in the future... Jade wakes up. She's at this outpost now with these survivors. And they scavenge for rich folks, wealthy folks, which is actually nice. I was thinking to myself, how are every one of these zombie scenarios, there's a zombie apocalypse, everybody just reduced to the Stone Age? I'm like, no, there would be some places that would still have power. There would be some places that would still possibly have internet. There would still be a lot of places that would actually still have civilized you know, societies and order and everything. Watch every single one of these, a lot of these motherfuckers sitting here wearing dirty ass clothes and you know, I know some of these, there will be some areas that still function uh, properly. Everything is just not just gonna go to hell. But, uh, so she's, you know, talks to the guy that saved her name, Tate and everything. She goes out and she's uh, finding that the camp, this uh, walled in area that they're in, is surrounded by zombies, and she, um, which is kind of cool, but it, even still, I'm like, oh, that's kind of dumb. Why all these zombies just piling around them? It doesn't make it really make any sense, but okay. Um, so there is uh, that. Even though, it's, like I said, it's a decent, sh it's a decent shot. And I'm sorry, these zombies are like in a, this camp is like in the middle of fucking nowhere. Where are all these zombies coming from? And then if you go by the whole smell factor, which they go into it later on, even still, you're not, um, how the fuck is there keen to smell that damn sharp? There's, their nose is so sharp, it's like a shark in water. You see one pint of blood, any human uh, fluids that being smelled, they can smell that shit, and they coming. I don't understand why again, but okay, fine. Uh, so we'll go back into the past. That was pretty fast. But anyways, uh, Jay tells Billy to find the girl, punch her, be the ass, do something, defend yourself. And all Billy ever says is she don't want to be called a psycho. And I'm like, shut the fuck up. Why do you keep bringing that shit up? But anyways, so Billy and Jay go confront the bully. I don't even know this girl's name. I don't think they even said it. I'm like, okay, that's, there you go with, you know, character development. <laughs> Got a bully here. Very significant in the first episode. We don't even know her name. Maybe they said it. I just didn't pay attention. I don't remember it. But anyways, so I'm thinking Billy's going to do something. But I'm like, nah, I feel like she's going to be stupid. What happens? Billy's sister extends her hand out and says, I'm sorry. And are we cool? I'm like, so this girl did all this disrespectful shit to you. Spoke to you stupid. 
And then y'all got in a fight because she was being an asshole to you. And you're going to apologize what which Jade actually said not to do. And I actually agreed with her. Billy, you fucking idiot. Not the actress, the character. And I'm going far as to say the writers too. Because the writer that wrote this was a fucking idiot. So anyways, this girl does some old dumb shit. And she was eating a sandwich or a poke or something. And she stuffs it into Billy's face. And I'm like, who the fuck would do that? What's what's the motivation here? Chaos? I don't see you doing that to nobody else. Why this girl? And everybody that look like punks. So why are you picking on this girl? You don't even know who this girl is. But she deserves it. So... I'm still trying to figure out why this girl ain't been expelled. Because we didn't see no repercussions for any of this. Like, I would have liked to seen, after the fight, the principal pull, you know, pull them both into the room and have some discussion about what happened. And I'm, but knowing Billy, so far from the 15 minutes we've actually gotten with the character, 15 to 20 minutes we've gotten to her character, she probably would just take all the blame and blame herself, even though all of this fucking physical evidence that they have that says contrary to the, uh, says contrary to her. I mean, I, this is a high-tech school. I'm quite sure the cameras, they got cameras there that could have shown that this girl was just being stupid when all of this went left. But, okay. So, um, she gets food in the face. Then go to a scene where you show Wesker. This dude's telling Wesker, hey, look what we got going on in Tijuana. And, of course, it's basically a Resident Evil in its full glory. You don't really see shit. All it is, it looks like a scientist with a camera phone running. And this dumbass. And it's showing that shit's happening, but it's not significant shit. Like, you see people running. You see guards, armed forces, whatever, firing, but you don't, you don't see what they're firing at. You would think that the person was recording this shit, that they would actually show what the fuck was actually going on. Not the chaos, but actually focus. It's like watching a fucking Godzilla movie, watching people run and scream and shit, but don't actually put the camera on Godzilla. So, oh, okay. Fucking dumb. Ooh, pa pa Paola Nunez. Oh, the girl from Bad Boys 3. Yeah, baby. But anyways, uh, that was freaking stupid. Uh, yeah, it's a zombie attack. Because even though the dude assess shit that alludes to it. Hey, why aren't they, why isn't he dead? Which, I'm not sure if I'm getting this mixed up because they showed this clip twice. Uh, one Wesker seen it and somebody else watches it later on. So maybe I saw like the small clip of it and then the longer clip later on. I'm getting it mixed up. All you know is there's a zombie attack. They don't show no fucking zombies. But okay, fine. So, uh, they said something. And I'm thinking this is canon. Because um, if this is New Raccoon City, then this would take place after Resident Evil 1, 2, and 3 at least, right? And if this the whole new timeline and everything with this new Raccoon City, then okay, fine. This is canon, or as much canon as you know the um, Halo is, uh, the Halo Silver timeline is to the main canon, or the sequel, the sequel trilogy of Star Wars to the main uh, main series, which. I did like the sequel trilogy. I have my reasons. I would I'd be happy to do a video on that. Type it up on the website or something. Uh, but getting back to this. Look, I, this, I still don't understand if this is canon or not. But okay, fine. Uh, because they keep saying that this has happened before. And then they say, hey, you know, this happened in Tijuana like before. So you would think, okay, Raccoon City. Zombie outbreak. Well, a T-virus outbreak. But the majority of the people turn into zombies. So okay, fine. So, the next scene, this crazy girl, this freak, goes to the bathroom. Then they have this person with a raccoon mascot head, which I saw. In the scene where they're in the lunchroom, you see another person with a mascot head. 
glad they highlighted that. Um, nice foreshadowing. So, she goes to the bathroom, and then the person with a raccoon mask fucks her up. Goes in the bathroom, kicks the door, stall door in, fucks her up. Then, you know, the principal comes and gets Billy. What kind of investigation was that? Because they didn't show the aftermath of what happened. They didn't show people being questioned or anything. I mean, if this, again, it goes back to if this girl was an asshole to Billy, has she been an asshole to other people? Is she a troublemaker? Like, you got to give us some kind of context clues about this character. You know, fuck character development. You know, any exposition to let us know what's up with this fucking girl. You know, should I care about her? Should I not care about her? I mean, obviously, through her actions, I don't care about her. Not me. And to some extent, I, I, I'm, I do. Like, I'm like, yeah, because Billy sucks. And I'm like, she get what she get. But at the same time, it's still not like my character. But anyways, so Billy gets called to the office. This dad is with that girl. That, that the freak's dad is sitting here threatening Billy. I'm like, so y'all don't have any cameras. Y'all didn't do no actual investigating. You didn't research to see what happened. You didn't see where Billy was when the fucking attack happened. You didn't ask any questions. You just immediately went to this girl. And then not only did you go to this girl, you brought this girl into the principal's office without her father in the presence of another adult who was threatening her. That makes complete sense. We didn't get nobody being questioned or nothing. And the thing about it is, like, I still don't understand why the fuck this happened. The principal tells Billy to go in her locker. She goes in the locker, and the mascot head is in there. Now, my thing is, why in the fuck was the mascot head in there? Now, the thing is, they try to make it seem like Billy did it because they said she got anger issues, which I thought it was at first, but I was like, no, that's too fucking simple and it's too stupid. But if she did do it, why in the hell she put the mascot mask back in her fucking locker? That does not make any sense. Why would you put the evidence... If I go shoot somebody, I'd be damned if I could put if I put the gun in my fucking dresser drawer, or if I put it in my glove compartment, or I'm gonna put it somewhere where somebody say, "Hey, look, open that up." You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be there. That doesn't make any sense. So the fact that the mask was even put there doesn't make any sense. Just another reason to sit there and just put Billy in these awkward situations. And I'm like, if the principal brought Billy in along with the other, the freak, along with her dad because of the two incidences, I would make, that would make more sense. But to say, okay, she went on the fucking offensive and she left a mask in there, and her leaving a mask is what specifically led them to go into the office, you don't need the mask, because it doesn't make sense to have it in the damn locker. Anybody with common sense would have threw it away or got rid of it, something, or put it fucking back. Well, they got it. In fact, she didn't even ask. Oh, oh, okay, these mascot masks, they obviously got to have a certain amount of, no, a certain number of them. So, couldn't they actually, the principal actually went and say, okay, who, have y'all seen anybody get this mask? Did somebody check this mask out? Okay, fine. No, so we ain't do nothing. No investigative research whatsoever. So, She's in the office, the dad's going off and everything. Wesker shows up, and this is probably, uh, which this is what I wanted to say, uh, another thing about that scene. The dad is going off about her, his daughter being attacked and everything. But I'm like, there's evidence twice um, that your daughter either attacked Billy or was overly aggressive to Billy. Twice you got people, you got a bunch of witnesses to vouch for it. You gotta have some kind of security system that's recording this shit. So why is the dad overly aggressive? I mean, I get that his daughter got attacked. So I can understand that part. But to say that he to just 
him to just completely overlook the buildup of everything doesn't make any freaking sense. But okay, fine. So Wesker shows up, and this is the one of the few moments I liked about this scene, uh, about this episode. Wesker gives him that speech. He's like, you work for Umbrella, I work for Umbrella. You do this, anybody can do that. I do this, I'm the only one that can do this. Now, I got, I got enough pull, I can make sure you lose your job. And not only to lose your job, no, I'm not going to do that to you. I'm going to blacklist your ass. So you'll never work in the tech co tech company ever again. And it was not as, not like that. It was actually pretty cool. Although he did kind of, what he led off with, if I threaten to quit or you get fired, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'll, I'll be like, well, I'm not going to lose my job over this. I'll be like, I say I know people. And I got pool, and I can make sure your ass never work again. Outside of that little thing of him threatening, him saying he could possibly threaten to quit, or otherwise uh, they fire him. Outside of that little bit, again, I wish you would have said, you know, I got pool. I, I know people. I know the people that don't run this shit. If I want your ass gone, you're gone. But that scene, I liked it. That felt like Wesker. That that he was serious. He sold me that scene. I love I love that scene. Now I'm, I'm not gonna lie. He sold me. That's a Wesker scene right there. That's that's the best scene in this episode. I he felt like Wesker to me. Not only that, he made the, the freak apologize to his daughter twice. So I and I like that because you can see Billy have a certain appreciation. For her dad's, you know, working all the time. Like that scene, trying to show her, like, yeah, you know, he might not work and everything. And he works all the time and everything. But that man, he pull, he pulling. So I, I, I actually did like that scene. I, I would, I would, uh, uh, I, I give him that. That was, but that probably was the best scene of the episode. Even the, uh, the caterpillar scene, I did like because it was just like monsters and shit. But. That scene was actually pretty cool. And then, you know, Wesker and Jay uh, and Billy are leaving. And Jade runs out of fucking nowhere. And I'm like, where the hell did this girl come from? And I don't know what it was. Just the way she was running away was shy. It, just, it looked weird. But I was like, where the fuck did this girl come from? So, of course, after that, we jump back to the future. And at this point... Uh, this is what we learned about the zombies where she says, you know, she's been studying zombies for the last six months. She's about how humanity needs to learn that we're not going to never get rid of zombies because at this point it's 300 million regular humans to 6 billion zombies and we got to learn how to live with them. She's been studying them to see if they have any type of intelligence. One line that she said that I thought was actually pretty interesting was she said that she better that, uh, she said that the zombies are going to change, they're going to mutate or something like that. And the dude's like, Tate, the guy that rescued her, is like, you know, no, they don't mutate and everything. And she's like, yes, because viruses mutate. And she's like, I hope hopefully this virus can become weaker, and the weaker it gets, the smarter the infected become. It was, uh, and again, it goes to what she was saying about learning about them so we can live with them and everything. And I, like I said, I thought that was actually pretty interesting. I thought that was interesting uh, I, 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 idealism. I, I, idealism. Uh, but then, you know, and, and, and I'm like, this is when you actually hear them call them zeros. And I'm like, uh, just, just say fucking zombies. <laughs> I'd rather say undead. I'd rather them say infected or undead compared compared to zero. I don't understand what the fuck zero means. What does it mean? Zero mental uh, cognitive abilities. But I don't know. Zero personality. Like what the fuck does zero mean? Ground zero. Uh, patient zero. Cause if, uh, patient zero. I was under the impression it's supposed to be one where everything started from. So you can't just call everything zeros. But okay, fine. But then uh, Tate ends up uh, giving uh, Jade, older Jade, the bad news. And the woman that's playing Jade, I don't mind. Uh, the, the 
Ella Belinska. I think she's doing a decent job with the character. The character is still somewhat shitty. Not really an interesting character. Obviously, it, she has a moment, and especially later on, you'll see the too, the, the too strong woman trope going on with the character. But actually, you see bits and pieces of it as it's been going on. But I think she does a, fa a fair job with the character. I don't understand how she has her hair the way she is. You've been sitting here for six months where you have time to be designing your hair like that, but fine, okay? But anyways, so uh, he ends up telling her that Umbrella is on the way there because the Umbrella is a hunt, uh, put a bounty on survivors from the initial breakout of New Raccoon City. Of course, the past is leading up to the outbreak and the future is the result of it years later. So uh, she finds out now, everybody pulling guns on her, Umbrella's coming to get her. Because uh, she's numero uno on their list. She's not the zero, but she's numero uno. Ha! Um, so we're going back to the past now. And Billy goes to Umbrella Corporation to go speak to her dad. Uh, it's kind of cool to have the little voice recognition, the name recognition, the face recognition software that allowed her in. And I can understand how the company would utilize that as a security measure, but you would still need boots on the ground just in case shit go left, especially with Umbrella. And given what happened with the Raccoon City incident, you will still need fucking boots on the ground. And what happens later on in the episode is definitely a reason why it makes sense to have boots on the fucking ground. But okay. So she goes, goes talks to her dad. She And while she's waiting, she sees these rabbits. And these are the same type of rabbits that you see Jade, the older Jade, use in the future to lure out the zombies. So while she's studying them and everything. And it's got this ominous music. And now, they uh, talk about Billy being a vegan. And you see little glimpses of, of how she doesn't like, you know, animals through dialogue and stuff, how she don't like and how animals are treated. And that's why one of the uh, things that triggered the fight was the girl talking about some shooting deers and shit. Cause she's, well, she's a fucking weirdo and a freak herself, but that was one of the things that contributed to it. So she likes animals and doesn't like, and thinks animals being tested and stuff is animal cruelty. Conversation for a completely different time, different video. But there's, uh, there's that. So that's how it relates to the bunny, it helps relate to the bunnies in the beginning of the episode um later on which is stupid because they were supposed she was supposed to meet her dad for lunch we're gonna get a conversation between these two so it just jumps to billy being at home on her laptop or tablet or whatever she's on jade comes to talk to her jade admits that she's the one that attacked the freak and i'm thinking to myself but you set your sister up. Why would you put that fucking raccoon mask in the locker? If you could take the time out to put that shit in her locker, you could have took the same amount of time to hide it, put it up, or do something. You literally set your sister up. So to make it up to her sister, Billy has the brilliant fucking idea to pull a 28 days later, and that's to get... Um, a bunch of uh, get a bunch of pictures and expose umbrella uh, exploiting animals and stuff like that and experiment on animals which she doesn't like dumbass fucking idea and, and even Jade even asked the same question I said what about my father what about dad it's your dad's job you gonna sit there and fuck your dad over because you don't like what the company is doing despite the fact you know that all of the good the living situation that you're in which is kind of weird because they saying, well, they don't experiment on animals. And I'm like, why would... I'm like, that's kind of interesting. The train's coming. It's kind of an interesting thing because they say they don't experiment on animals. But I'm like, there's some level of experimentation on animals with a lot of stuff. And I would rather everybody get on board with that. I'm not saying they have to do the craziest shit to animals and stuff like that. But at the same time, uh, Jesus... Uh, let me go ahead and pause it right now because I do not want. All right, we're back. <laughs> Sorry about that. But anyways, so to continue on with the conversation, we were talking about how Billy had the brilliant fucking idea to sit here and try to have 
Jade go into Umbrella Corporation to take photos to expose them for experimenting on animals. You know, the place that your father works, a very powerful man. You've reaped the benefits of this. Okay, fine. And it's a bit of dialogue that was fucking dumb. And so Billy asked Jay how to get past the security cameras. And what does Jay say? No, but the internet does. So the internet <laughs> could teach you how to break into a very important, highly secured uh, a research and development facility. One of the most powerful corporations in the entire planet. Okay. Internet can teach you that. Okay. Fine. So, they end up, now earlier when she went to go see, uh, when Billy went to go see her father at the place, she saw the camera, it said voice recognition, said her name, identified her visually before letting her in. So they decided to do the exact same thing. Except they wore, they put flashlights on their heads to blind the camera so they didn't, because the camera can't see who it is, and then play her, a voice recording of the father with his voicemail, and it identifies voice. But I'm like thinking to myself, but it that seemed like a two part confirmation system both uh, vocal and visual. Even if you did get the vocal down pat, the visual aspect wouldn't allow it because you can't see. But the door is open. Another reason, they probably should have had some security personnel boots on the ground. And how the fuck, I still don't get the train of thought behind the writing. Two girls use a cell phone to break into the most what you would expect to be highly secure facility in, in that area. I guess that, that the recession is just hard times on everybody. They can't afford even one old ass guard to just walk the grounds. Okay, so there's no security to stop them. There's no night crew there. So they're literally in this big facility by themselves. And then the way they just maneuver and go about going everywhere in the facility makes no fucking sense. There's literally no security. If you're, even if you're in like the place that I work at, it's a warehouse. We have security measures there. The only way you can get to certain areas is if you have a key card and other areas. The only way you can get uh, to get to those areas is if your key card has a certain level on it. And you see that throughout other businesses. You see that in, uh, in, in banks. You see that in security firms. You see that in law firms. You see that in research and development uh, uh, centers. You see that in a lot of places. It's not that... It's not a rare thing. So you can't tell me that these girls were able to just, and yes, they did end up getting a security card, which I believe it was their dad's. But if you have a two-step uh, a two step approach to getting into the place, I'm quite sure you would need more than just a swap of a card to get where you need to get to at certain places. And they're just going around, and, and, they're, and the places they're going are very specific. Because they went to a very specific. Now, I get the girl was looking and she saw that the dude with the rabbits went to uh, basement four and everything, which is what they did end up going to when they saw it uh, to see the animals and stuff. But I'm like, what the fuck? So there's nobody here and they just got free reign to go wherever. And there's literally no moment where this girl, they didn't know where they were going, which is weird in my opinion. I'm like, this is the first time y'all been here. I get that she went in there one time, but she knows where the fuck everything is. She knows specifically where she's going. Okay. So let's jump back to the future. Uh, uh, Jay tries to warn Tate that Umbrella does not play fair. You don't want to work with these cats. Now, Tate does have a decent motivation. He doesn't want to be in the wildlands anymore. He want to go to a more secure area 
where Umbrella has the pool and they gave her, you know, better life. That's not a bad motivation, actually. But then, you know, Umbrella shows up, fucking murders everybody. This <laughs> is the first thing they do. This the, this guy that gets out the plane, some representative that plane uh, gets out the helicopter, all these armored guards, they look like ODSD. I thought that's who the fuck they I'm like, did we just switch to Halo? But they got that type of armor that when you watch a zombie apocalypse go down, like that's the type of armor you want because the zombies can't bite through that shit. Somehow they do. Remember the SWAT uh, guy from The Walking Dead? How the fuck did the zombies get through all that on armor and padding? What do he do this? That shit was zombie trying to bite me and I got that on. I'm doing this. <laughs> but anyways, so they this this is one of the I don't know what kind of guy this is. I laughed when I watched. I was like, who the fuck is this guy? He he's a representative. He's like one of those representatives that's like a kiss ass. He's not nobody takes his ass serious. He's like the retarded kid in class. Nobody care about this dude. Nobody worry about this dude in the slightest. He's the least threatening character in this entire show. Even Billy I found more intimidating than this fool. So, and they even try to have a bit of humor. They try to make him seem like he's uh, a threat. And then what happened? He kind of stumbles on the stairs, which I thought was kind of funny a little bit. Uh, not a big chuckle, but a little chuckle out of me. Out of me. So, Tate says what he says. And as you know, dude pulls out a gun, blows Tate's head, uh, shoots Tate in the head. The rest of the guys get to mowing everybody else down. So, Jade is trying to run for her life. Even though they came there specifically to, you know, get her. They just shooting wild and out and everything. And obviously, they don't give a fuck about who they shooting. And they're not really too careful about who they shooting because you see her dodging bullets and shit. But, okay, let's go back to the past now. They get into this highly secured area, which I wrote this down in my notes. Wesker is home sleep at this point because it's nighttime. So I would think that his badge, and I would, would be a more secure location. Where is it literally right next to him, his bed on the nightstand? I would think he would have hid it somewhere, or put it somewhere in a safe, safe, safe location, just in case, I don't know, somebody breaks into the house, they have to get out, and, you know, somebody don't steal the shit, which the daughters end up doing. But, okay, so they get down there, they're taking photos, well, Billy's taking photos. Jade ends up hacking into one of the computers. For some fucking reason, I guess it is her dad's computer, despite everybody that works there. She says it's got, she gets his name, his username right, and his freaking password. Now, before they get there, she says that, that her dad, Wesker's password is the same password. It's something. I forgot what it was. But he, that's the only password he ever uses across across the board. And I'm like, so that was his actual password to this highly classified and secret research and development area in this place. So she a fucking a hacker because her dad's a fucking idiot. Thank you, writers. That was well thought out. So she ends up Specifically coming across, of course, the Tijuana incident. And it's a bit more of an extended cut where you see this guy's running. He's got blood on him. He's saying, why won't this guy die? You see a bunch of gunfire. You don't see fucking zombies. You see people running. And I thought they were zombies, but they weren't attacking the the guys with the guns. So I was like, okay, they're civilians or whatever. They got a lot of blood on them, but damn. So I'm thinking to myself, yes, this is where I'm like, okay, Raccoon City. Another outbreak, Tijuana. Okay, fine. It is what it is. Um, but then Billy, who's a fucking idiot, does one of the stupidest things. <sighs> She's taking pictures of all these monkeys and rabbits and all of these animals are in cages and stuff in there, which I'm kind of weirded out because of the way they were the the animals were caged. I would think they would be in like cages in the animal area for animals so that way they could be, whenever the 
the morning shift gets there, they can be fed, they can be taken care of, they can be groomed. No, they just sitting in the fucking dark in glass cases across the laboratory. And I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. You would think there would be like an animal room or something where they would go in there to get them out. They would take them out of the lab every day and move them. To, okay, fine. But then uh, Billy goes to this, here's this noise or growl or whatever, goes to this fucking cage that obviously looks like you shouldn't fuck with it because you don't know what's in it. You can't even see what's in it. And she gets the brilliant, brilliant, I mean, I'm going to say it one more time, brilliant idea to open this cage that has no, I mean, I saw a couple of holes, breathing holes and everything. You can't see into it. This bitch, and that's the character, not the uh, actress, the character. The actress is doing a job. Another damn train. Gosh. But anyways, she opens this cage and takes a picture. And guess what comes out? I, I thought it was a zombie. No, it was a fucking zombie dog. Or an infected dog or whatever. So, uh, let me, uh, I was just, I, uh, I go that train. Let me go ahead and, uh, so yeah. There's a zombie dog that comes out, or an infected dog, whatever you want to call it. It it looks decent. It looks decent. Actually, to me, it actually looked better than the zombie dogs in the first Resident Evil uh, movie. Because this dog actually looks infected, whereas the, those dogs look like they were half dead. So they're like the zombie dog. This one like is infected. It's on the road to, to being fucked up. So this is kind of a, another scene that I thought was actually decent. It was kind of, it goes back to more of the horror element. The girls are running um, there and they're running throughout this facility. It looks like the alarms are going off and everything. No security. Uh, there And it's crazy. It's a good scene. There's a lot of tension. This zombie dog is just doing this thing. And I swear, I, okay, they went down to basement four, which is where they released this thing. So I'm thinking, okay, they run out and they lock the door behind them. I could have sworn, I could have sworn that they clo they got into the elevator and it went back up to the ground level. How did the dog get up there? Because they get to the ground level and then there's a door. And I'm like, okay, is this door, uh, and, and you know, something's banging against this door. And I'm like, so is that the, the stairwell? And if that was a stairwell, how did that dog know to go there? That they were, that they were, to go to the ground floor? And how did the damn dog get to the stairwell? Or, like, I'm still trying to figure out where that door led to. Because if that was basement four, that means there's had to have been, what, three levels between that and the ground floor? How the fuck did that dog trans transverse that? That fast? So I'm not sure where this dog, I don't know if the dog teleported. I don't know where the fuck this dog came from, but the dog somehow got to the ground level. Some crazy reason. And again, like I said, I think this actually felt Resident Evil. I like Resident Evil. These two girls are trying to survive against this zombie dog. And the dog actually exhibits, you know, actual, you know, dog capabilities. It's smelling, it's listening for them. I thought that was actually done pretty well. Yes, this build up was fucking stupid. The fact that there's nobody there is fucking stupid. But it was actually decent. And decent is probably number three on the list of things that was actually decent about the episode. But uh, having said that, it does end on it does kind of end where Billy gets attacked and seemingly killed. And Jade ends up uh, killing a dog in the process. Did I feel sorry for Billy? No. Do I think she's dead? Not for long. But it was interesting. That was a decent scene. I would give him that. But then we end up flashing back to the future. You know, umbrellas, goons is sitting here mopping the floor with the rest of these people, just fucking just blowing the shit out of everybody, left and right. Which is weird because I hadn't seen one of those guys reload one of those guns yet. Maybe it's like one of those guns from like, you know, the old Judge Dredd movie or those guns they had on Deep Rising that you never see those guys actually reload. But 
they had they had that infinite ammo on them. It was going to, they, they, and they were hammering it away too. But you know they get end up the the, the goons and the, this non-threatening guy. Well, obviously, he is a threat. He did shoot him out of the head. But non-threatening guy back Jay into a corner, and then they see, and then he ends up revealing that. Jade's sister has been looking for her. So we're saying that possibly Jade's sister is running Umbrella. Wesker's definitely definitely got to be there. But I think it's interesting that they led with the sister was looking for her specifically and not the father. So we don't know what the situation is with Wesker. But hopefully we'll get some answers of that possibly in the next episode. So the sister who we thought was dead, uh, which we knew wasn't dead, but the sister's alive looking for her. You get a interesting moment. You get a good moment of her being shocked. Now I'm not sure she's shocked that her sister is alive, but her sister's been looking for her. That's that's be an interesting thing we'll look forward to as well. But then she pulls a Spock out of Star Trek into darkness and takes a running charge and leaps off into the hordes of zombies outside of the camp, and that's where the episode ends. Shit, that was. Look, I just watched Halo a few weeks ago, and I was so fucking hurt by just how bad the writing was. I mean, you see more of that bad writing more and more nowadays. But Resident Evil, I didn't think it would be that bad. I have a lot of questions concerning Wesker, the performance around this character. A lot of it is the writing. The actors and actresses, they do a decent enough job. Like I said, that was the one moment where Wesker actually felt like Wesker for a second, for about a minute. The characters, for the most part, are just so fucking forgettable and so unlikable. Every character so far, they try to make me feel something for Jade, but her past just keeps coming back to bite me in the ass like that zombie did Billy. Except he got her in the neck and the shoulder or whatever. Which is weird because when he attacked her, I didn't see no blood. She's supposed to be dead. Was she die of fright? She died of fucking heart disease, uh, heart attack? She had a stroke? Shit. <laughs> Let me know. I thought the dog ripped her, her, her artery in the neck or something. But I was disappoint, uh, disappointed in a lot of the buildup uh, that I saw. I disappointed in a lot of the characters. Disappointed in a lot of the dialogue. Disappointed in a lot of the decisions. Disappointed, disappointed in the direction. The whole past to present thing, I think, would be a work was decent. It just uh, it felt like longer segments would have worked out a little bit better because they seemingly switched like every five minutes. I think they had a, did it to where it switched maybe four times, give us about twenty minutes of them when they're kids, give us about twenty minutes of her in the capital wasteland, like this fucking fallout. You know, I think that'll work out better towards the narration, make it less jumpy to where it is. But I, I followed it easily enough, so I can't really complain about that too much. Just seeing the build up to what's going to happen, what's going to be the apocalypse, is what's going to keep me entertained. Hopefully, the second episode will be a little bit better with the narration, give us more than just random shit that's just going on, because it's all see this fucking random shit going on. This girl sitting here attacking Billy for no fucking reason. Billy wanting to break into Umbrella Corporation. No fucking reason to do that. Jade being a complete asshole to everyone since she moved there. No reason for that. So, like I said, I personally would give this episode a 2 out of 5. I did like the giant caterpillar. Would have wished it would have went a, a different way. I did like the scene at the principal's office and the dog scene. I thought it was decent. So, just uh, Resident Evil Episode 1 definitely would get a 2 out of 5 for me. Hopefully, I can bump it up to a 3 next episode. But from all the hate that I've been seeing over the internet, probably not. But anyways, guys, in the comment section below, let me know what your thoughts on on episode one of Resident Evil, the Netflix series. Did you like it? Did you not like it? And just give me one, at least one moment you thought that was awesome, or at least decent, and and one moment that you thought that was just pure dog shit. And I'm talking about infected zombie dog shit as well. But having said that, 
And uh, be sure to hit that like, share, subscribe, and that notification button to get the best of what we got going on. We'll definitely catch you guys later. Till next episode. Peace out.